we continue to see vast disparities in smoking. Um, these, these, the successes that we've seen in tobacco control have not necessarily been experienced uh, by all members of our, of our, uh, of our communities. Um, and in particular, we still see very high rates of smoking among people of very low income background, uh, the socioeconomically disadvantaged, and other groups that we would traditionally regard as being vulnerable, that is, uh, people who have mental illness, people with substance use problems, um, people from the LGBTQ community um, continue to smoke at rates that are vastly higher, twice or three times, the rate of the general population. Um, we know that quitting smoking is hard. And, uh, and even with the best evidence-based interventions available, um, somewhere fewer than 10% of people who make a, a quit attempt uh, are still able to achieve abstinence at the end of one year. Uh, what this is telling me is that we need opportunities, we need to provide alternatives to adult smokers to reduce their risk of, uh, of, of, of illness and premature death um, and to, uh, to, to think creatively about innovative strategies um, of which vaping devices uh, happens to be one. Um, the opportunity to deliver clean nicotine to adult smokers in a way that can support them transitioning away from the very, the vastly more harmful exposure to uh, combusted tobacco smoke is, is something that we continue to need to think about very carefully. The challenge of course is, and I absolutely agree with, with all of my colleagues here, with Joe, with Karen and with Howard, is we need to keep these devices out of the hands of kids.